What's going on all you fantastic freelancers? William here and I would like to welcome you all back to the channel. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to click that subscribe button for more Anthem content. Without further ado, let's get into it. Today's video is going to be a little different. This is usually the day I would release a dev tracker video for the tweets the last week, but I'm going to hold off until Monday. The other day I made the microtransactions in Anthem video to address a significant woe the community and those who don't follow Anthem as closely as we do have with the game. To be honest with you all, that was tiptoeing around the subject I wanted to cover. This video is going to be a little more direct in what I wanted to address the other day. It's no secret that there have been a plethora of Anthem haters since E3 2017, and even more now than ever. Keep in mind, I'm definitely not trying to bash these people. We're all entitled to our opinions, and some of their concerns are valid. I just want to try and pinpoint as many of their issues with Anthem as possible, and put their minds to ease by alleviating their concerns and gripes. If they come back and say Anthem still sucks, fine by me. But I've said my piece, and I've made my defense. Now, what brought this video on? Well, a few days ago, I was on vacation, and I woke up and did my usual Anthem news routine. I got on Twitter to see if I missed anything from users like BSN, Anthem Universe, and obviously anything from Mark Dara, John Warner, Michael Gamble, and anything else from the official Anthem Twitter. After that, it's on to YouTube to see if there's been a major Anthem news update, and if there hasn't been, then I'll watch a quick video from my homepage feed, which is usually Anthem-related for obvious reasons. That particular day, I was kind of impressed with the number of, oh, let's say the less than stellar videos on the new IP. The worst of it comes from the official Anthem YouTube channel with the gameplay and the trailers, and the comments ranged from distrust with EA, which I can understand, hating the game for the sake of hating it, references to Andromeda, microtransactions, and then there were the videos from larger YouTubers with titles like Anthem should scare you, or Anthem is sinking fast, or better yet, Anthem is proving us wrong but not for the right reasons. Ugh. Granted, these video titles are intended to be a little clickbaity. People are drawn to negative and bad news more than they're drawn to positive or more honest titles. However, clickbait isn't my gripe. Every YouTuber uses clickbait. But it's these types of videos that really don't help with the level of hate the game has been getting. Anyways, these are the most prominent issues Anthem's general audience and skeptics are having, so let's just break it down and start icing down the concerns. First up is the microtransactions controversy in EA. If you want a full, detailed explanation of how microtransactions are going to work in Anthem, I'll leave it to you all to check out my previous video. The long and short of it is, there will only be direct purchase items and zero loot boxes. These direct purchases are cosmetic only and can be earned outside of the in-game store through regular game progression. However, I can somewhat understand concerns in regards to how EA has been in the past, Battlefront 2 being the chief source of the haters' ammunition. And I get it. I'm a huge Star Wars fan myself, and getting burned by EA like that hurt. They are also drawing parallels to how EA could also bring about the collapse of Bioware, similar to how they nearly collapsed Star Wars gaming and hurt said franchise. Andromeda was Bioware where Star Wars The Last Jedi for many, and now they believe this will be the Battlefront 2 of Bioware with Anthem. Another concern was raised that loot boxes could be introduced later on once EA has their hooks in us, as well as paying for DLCs and other content. Here's what I have to say about the microtransaction controversy. As far as we know, loot boxes are out of the picture altogether. The only thing we have to worry about right now are direct purchases for cosmetics that can be earned through normal gameplay. As far as loot boxes being added in later, I would hope EA has learned their lesson and unless they want another game to die, they will keep loot boxes far, far away from Anthem. DLCs are another story. I know Mark Dara has said a few times that Anthem is meant to be a live service game and has no intentions of Anthem 2 or Anthem 3 or Anthem Forsaken or whatever else. And if there will be paid updates and DLCs, I'm sure they'll introduce it close to a year after launch and it won't be a decision they'll make lightly. Anyways, for now, we have beaten a dead horse. We have covered everything in regards to microtransactions. Now, as far as the EA gripe goes, 
I kind of agree with it for the most part. I have been one of their harshest critics, and I'm not afraid to be vocal about it. There is a reason why they have been bestowed the coveted title of one of the most hated companies in America. They have had less than consumer-friendly tactics in the past with some very exploitative tactics thrown in. They were the source of the microtransaction war with their loot boxes in Battlefront 2, and EA has made some very bad decisions in the last two years, if not more. Many gamers blame them for Andromeda's issues and its subsequent end. Now, bear with me, let me see if I can get this right. Andromeda didn't just die, it was murdered. Ugh. This one, I can safely say, wasn't 100% EA's fault. Now, don't get me wrong. They had their faults on their side with the game, but we certainly did our fair share as gamers. I can't tell you how many videos I saw within the first week of release from a variety of YouTubers, some I lost all respect for, bashing the game for the character creation, animation issues, gameplay issues, and so on. As a matter of fact, the hate was so bad they shut it all down because they didn't think they could recapture the fan base and they couldn't escape the hate. Now, granted, that isn't the total reason, but it's a good portion of it. It wasn't until Bioware and EA called it quits that a variety of content creators suddenly released a flow of videos saying, essentially, were we too hard on Andromeda and are we to blame for the game's end? Of course, not everyone will take that as one of the reasons why Andromeda ended and instead they blame Anthem and EA for shifting assets. While they did shift around members of the Andromeda and SWOTOR team to Anthem, we have to take a considerable amount of blame for justifying those shifts. As far as blaming EA wholly for the end of Andromeda, that's not fair. The content community has to admit their role in it and move on. Let's call this one a draw. The next source of ammo comes from, well, just Anthem as an IP. My question is, why? So far, the game has looked pretty good. Granted, we do need to see more. The devs are actively answering our questions and concerns. The community is very supportive and incredibly healthy. Not to mention the story sounds interesting. So, what is there to hate? I'm just telling this one up to trolls, hating just to hate, and maybe some minor justifiable skepticism. My last item on this list is possibly my least favorite to talk about. Throughout my studies in communications and work on radio and television, I always tried to practice honest and positive journalism, not stirring up the beehive or inciting panic over a hurricane that wouldn't hit us and the worst that we would get were some minor winds. Granted, there are times that there are sad or less than desirable things that we have to report on, but we don't fearmonger or create worry and panic. This is where certain YouTubers I think have failed. No, I know they've failed. Sure, the argument can be made that they are just expressing their own opinions, and it's their right to do so. I'm not disputing that. My issue comes more so from the fearmongering or inciting concerns and panic where there isn't any. There's nothing wrong with informing your audience about something that might affect them or things that they should think about. But geez, there is a way to do it. Titles like Anthem Should Scare You or Anthem Is Sinking Fast or better yet, Anthem Is Proving People Wrong but not for the right reasons definitely doesn't help. I almost wonder when we're going to hear the premature words, Anthem didn't just die, it was murdered. Some people just seem to enjoy stirring the pot. Now, I'm not trying to bash any YouTubers, but come on. They aren't helping anyone but themselves and their views by doing this. Obviously, I don't think Anthem is going to die or be murdered. Anyways, guys, I hope this video was somewhat informative, and I especially hope that I was able to ease the minds of Anthem's critics a little bit. If you would like to talk with me directly in regards to any other concerns you may have, or show me your side of the argument, I would genuinely love to hear them. Really, I would. You can find my contact information in the About section of my channel, or you can find me on Twitter at AnthemYour. And if you would like to continue the conversation, feel free to leave a comment in the description below. And lastly, if you are new to the channel and want more Anthem content regularly, just click that little subscribe button. It helps me out a ton and allows me to reach more freelancers just like you. Anyways, this is the end of the video. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next one. Peace out, everybody.